my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to continue with the second part of the request that I covered the last time, which comes from Jesse Sambro 9535. And if you remember, he asked about using MKV or Handbrake to convert movies or TV shows from ISO format to uh, supported format by Plex. So this time I'm going to set up the Handbrake application in a container because we can set it up in a container. And then we can see what we can do with that application. And then that will be done with this request and we can mark it as completed. So currently, if you go into handbrake.fr, you will see the website for the Handbrake application. And as you can see, this is a open source tool that is written by volunteers to convert video to a bunch of different formats. And basically it says that it allows you to convert basically to any format and it's free and open source and it's multi-platform so you can run it on Windows, Mac and Linux and on a container too. And if you go here, you can see that you can download for Windows or other platforms. So it is an actual application that you can run and you don't have to run it as a container. But I'm going to run it in a container just to show the capabilities of the application in a container. So if you go into their GitHub repository, which is found in github.com slash handbrake slash handbrake, you will find that it says, you know, this is the main development repository for the application. It has been released 48 times currently on version 192 so that's pretty good it has 123 contributors so there's a healthy amount of people that contribute to this project and it's mainly written in c and c sharp so we go down here and we can see that it is a transcoder and it lets you convert videos that you have into other formats so that they work on your mobile phone tablet tv etc so it supports a lot of modern video formats and it says that it works with most common video files including consumer grade and professional grade video cameras devices like mobile devices and tablets and all that and it can even support x265 codec so it's pretty powerful it has a lot of capabilities of converting and it is also available in a lot of different languages so it's pretty straight up and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using their docker image which can be found in docker hub at jlesage handbrake and we're going to be running it in our nas and in this application we can see what it needs to run so basically it's telling us that we need to give a config directory a place to a uh, storage place and then a watch folder and an output folder so pretty straightforward it tells us in here what we need to do uh, so it says that the configuration states and logs are stored on the first one on config then the second location contains files from your host that you need to make accessible to the application so basically this is where you put the files that you want to work with and then the watch folder is for videos that you want to just drop into a folder to have it automatically convert so that's a watch folder. And then the output is where it's gonna drop the converted files in the end. And by default, it says that the application listens on port 5800. So that's pretty good, pretty straightforward. Now we can use this information that we have learned here to build the folder structure. So for that, I'm gonna go into the NAS, I'm gonna go into file station, and as usual, I'm gonna create a new project. So I'm gonna go into projects and I'm gonna create one for hand break. And then I'm going to go into the container section and I'm going to create another folder also for handbrake where we're going to be putting those folders that we need to pass to the container. If we remember correctly, we had a config folder. We also had a output folder. We had a storage folder and we had a watch folder. So that's the four folders that we need. And basically that is going to be where it's going to store all the stuff in our NAS and this one here is where we're going to have the docker compose file so that's all that we need when it comes to the folders for this project so now we can go ahead and start working on the actual project so for the project we're going to go here and we're going to create a new project and we're going to name this project hand break and we're going to select the path in the projects folder that we created for it and we're going to say that we're going to store a docker compose file in there and for now let me start by copying the contents of the one that we had for make mkv 
Next, next, don't start and done so that we can see it in a bigger screen. And then we're gonna make the changes here so that it matches what we need for hand break. So again, the container is gonna be hand break here. And then the image that we're gonna be using is gonna be this one here. So it's gonna be J Lesage hand break and we're gonna be using the latest tag. Yes, they have the latest, so that's perfect. That works for us. So let's go here and change this into J Lesage hand break. And then we're gonna name the container here hand break. And now we have to define the environment variables. First thing is the time zone as usual. In my case, it's America, New York. And then the user ID and the group ID for that user that is gonna be running in the container. So we're gonna give it the administrator of our NAS with the group for that account. And that's gonna give it access to read and write to the folders because I have already given access to that specific user to the folders that I just created. Now in here, we need to mount then the different folders that we're gonna have. Let me create a new one here that is gonna be for the watch because we did not have that on the other one. Now I'm gonna go back into my folders here and I'm gonna copy the path to this and then I'm gonna replace that in here for the config. And then the other ones are basically the same thing but with the end being changed. So instead of config, this is gonna be storage. And then in here, instead of watch, he uh, uh, instead of config, it's gonna be watch. And in here, instead of config, it's gonna be output. So now we have the folders here, config, output, storage, and watch pointed here on the left side. And then in the container, they're gonna be mounted into config slash storage slash watch and slash output. And then the port that we're gonna be using for this is 5800 because it said that 5800 is the port that it uses. So that is pretty good for us. Now we should be able to then start the container by saving and then building. And then this is gonna pull the image and it's gonna build the container. I'm, I'm gonna be back when that is done because that takes a little bit of time, especially when you're running an actual application that is being emulated inside a container. So I'll be back when that is done. All right, that was actually faster than I thought it would be. So let me check here what's the size of that image. So Handbrake is actually 531 megabytes. It's not that bad, that's really good. And now if we go into the project, we can see that the application is running. And if we look into the logs, we'll see that it looks like everything uh, was started correctly. Yes, it says all services started, so everything is good. We should be able to go into the IP of our NAS and then put port 5800 and we get this user interface here. And as you notice, this kind of looks like what the application would look like if you install it in your operating system. One thing that is important here, you can see it has support for Intel Quick Sync and NVIDIA NVENC and X265 and FDK and Live Dovi. So Intel Quick Sync and NVIDIA NVENC, those are the codecs for the specific Intel and NVIDIA graphics cards. So that means that it can do graphics acceleration using that. That's all that I want to show here. Now, the thing we have here is we need to have a source to so a file to convert. And then we're going to make some changes here to the configuration of how we want that to be converted. And then we can just add it to the queue and it will do the conversion. All right to see if it is able to handle ISO files, because remember that was the original request. I have dropped the disk number one for the Silverhawks uh, series that I had, tried on the previous uh, video to see if it works. Uh, let's go and try that now. So here we can click on open source, and then in here we'll see that it did recognize the ISO file here. It says that it's a raw CD image because it's a DVD um, nine ISO basically. So then we can select this and see what it does. And as you can see, it is scanning all the different content that is in there. You see that it says that is uh, 720 by 480, so it's standard definition. And it finds like all the details, subtitle tracks and all that. So it is capable of seeing everything. And if we click here, we'll see all the different options that we have here. Remember, the first one was like all the episodes in one file and the other ones were all the, like the different episodes. So it was able to read the ISO properly and now we should just be able to convert this into the files that we want, right? But by default, it starts with a preset that says that it's gonna convert into a standard generic file. 
that is uh, encoded on H.264 and is going to encode it to 1080p and 30 frames. So if you want a different type of encoding, you can change that here. And also it says that it's going to be an MP4 container. So there's several options that I already defined. It's using this one here that is very fast in 80p. But if you would like, for example, I prefer Matroska files. So I could go into Matroska here. And then we have several options here. We can say, for example, since this is standard definition, if I don't need to upscale it, I could just say H264 MKV for 80p, 30. So that'll be exactly the same uh, quality as the original files. And that'll be fine. But if I want to save some space, I could do like H265 MKV for 80, 30 frames. So let's say that I'm going to do something else here. We can define what we want it to use as the default preset. So how do we do that? We go here where it says presets and then we'll see the list of the presets and then I can go and look for the one that I want. Let's say I want the standard definition H264. Then I can click here on the three dots and say set it as default. And now this is going to be my default. If you notice it's bold because now that's a default. So that is going to be using right now. And we can always change the different options that we have here. So we can, for example, make changes to the format that we want. And we can change the dimensions of the file. If we want to, for some reason, change it to another aspect ratio or something. We have filters here that we can apply. The video, we can apply changes. For example, the video encoder, we can change it here. We can change other settings like the bitrate and stuff like that. The audio, we can do something similar to that. It says that we have one English audio. We don't have anything else here. So let's see in the tracks. Yeah, that's all that we have. And then if we go into subtitles, then it says if it has any subtitles or not. It doesn't see anything. It just says burned in video and that's it. I don't see any other tracks, so that's it. And then in the chapters, we can select the different chapters that we want for this. And this will be like chapter markers. And then the tags, if you want to tag the contents. I'm not going to change anything because this is for the sake of the video. And this is going to be just enough like it is. And then once we have this set up, we can basically just say start. And it'll start encoding. If we click there, then you see it's going to do the encoding and the pass and all that. So it's going to be converting everything into the MKVs in this uh, case and it's going to be stored in the output folder that we pass the container. So this is going to take a while because I believe I am not using the graphics card to do this. Even then it's pretty going pretty fast for using the CPU. So this, this is a lot. So it's going to probably take a lot of time. So we can go into the folder and see if we see that file being created. So right here in the storage, I can go back into handbrake and then go into output. And there we go. We see that it is writing the video into that MKV file that is going to be created as a result from this. So we just give it time because, you know, it's working. You can see that the size is increasing when I refresh, but it takes a good amount of time. It says that like about 40 minutes to convert this. So. I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to come back when I at least I have a full video so then we can see what it has as a result. All right, this was the first video, which is all the episodes in one. And I stopped it because it was too much, but you can see that it was working. And the content is there, so that is good. I don't want to get any copyright uh, issues, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm gonna, not going to show a lot more, but I want to show what happens when you give it something in the watch folder and try to see if it recognizes it and then works on it. So I'm going to put the Big Buck Bunny movie in here and see if we get something out of that by the applications. We can see that it started immediately creating something here. So it immediately recognized that file that I put in the watch folder here. And if we go into the output, we see that it is working on it because the size keeps increasing. So let's give it time. And then we'll see when that is done, what do we get from it? We see that, oh, there's something here that tells me automatic video converter and it recognizes and it shows me the status of that. So it's almost done. So let's wait a little bit until that is completed. And now we should see a new file here. There you go. Big Buck Bunny. And it was processed by the application from the watch folder. 
into the output folder and as you can see it's 480p h264 so it's exactly what we specified that we wanted as our preset that was by default so as you can see that's one of the advantages that the ability to automatically convert stuff that you drop into the watch folder but it allows you to do it manually too so this is another option that you have if you have isos and you want to convert them to like mkv or mp4 files so that then you can put them on plex and watch them with your system and i hope that uh, satisfies the request that's going to be the end of that request and we're done with that one so if you like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so that's really important that helps us to grow and that opens opportunities for us remember i make a lot of these videos based on comments that i receive from you and i try to reply to you as soon as possible and i try to help you out with issues that you have so feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what kind of things you would like to see in the channel and another thing is you should have noticed that there was no ad on my video that's on purpose i'm not monetizing the channel that also means that i get zero money out of all the effort that i put into making these videos so if you like the content and you want to support me there's a link in the description below to paypal where you can do a donation there's also a bitcoin a wallet address so you can donate that way if you prefer so that's going to be really helpful for the channel i also shout out to the people that donate to the channel the channel in the beginning of my videos so i'm going to leave it at this thank you very much for being here i'll see you in the next one